What's up, Weber? How are you guys doing? Welcome back to Digital Marketing. Um, I did realize that I kind of screwed up. Oh, wrong way. Let's get me back in the picture. There I am. Look at my glorious face. Um, I did realize that I forgot to do something that I told you I was going to do. Um, so before we start into the new stuff today, I'm going to go to this new tab and I'm going to show you how to actually look at the code and how to do your last assignment. Uh, let's go here. We're going to type in MBA.com because we all like basketball, right? MBA.com. Now, this is a glorious page and you're like, oh my gosh, I love it so much. But how does the code work? Let me close out of that. Um, I want to see if their meta tags actually match what it should or not. So you're going to right click. On a Chromebook, that's a two finger click on the mouse pad. And then you are going to do view page source. And holy crap, here's all the code. And you're like, oh my gosh, this looks like crazy stuff. Now, we know the different kinds of things that we're looking for. We're going to look for things like heading, like H1, H2. We're going to look for meta tags. We're going to look for uh, keywords. And I'm going to help you out. I would mostly, to find it, hit Control F and your little search bar will come up. And just search it and see what you can find. The whole goal of this assignment is to see if you agree with what's popping up and if it works to make sense on everything that you would think. So I'm going to look up keywords. We have keywords right now. Let's look around. We have things like images. We're going to look right here. Keywords with the content of MBA.com. Now, with MBA.com, if I actually just look up NBA on Google, that MBA.com uh, is pretty much the first site that pops up after the news. Why? Because it's a pretty big deal that the content is MBA.com. It pretty much tells us right here in the source if I search MBA, that should be one of the things that pops up. I can keep looking through keywords. Uh, maybe we can look at H1s. I don't even heading. Let's see heading. Maybe it's not in there. Um, let's look at description. We have description, the official side of National Basketball Association. So to kind of show you again, if I were to come in here and instead of NBA, I decided to do National Basketball Association. Whoa, I can't even spell when it's right in front of me. Association, if I do that, it's going to do kind of the same thing. It's got the description of that. There's my MBA.com as the number one source, and it's still going to help me out. So with that assignment, look at the code. Remember, right-click, view source, or inspect source um and just kind of look through the different tags see what you think it's a very exploratory thing i don't expect you to know what most of this code means okay everybody feel good i'm going to close out of these and i'm going to go back over here and we're going to talk about a couple other things that actually help with our seo from last time you learned that it was search engine optimization and we're wanting our stuff to be on the top of the web search. Now, one of the things that crawlers or web crawlers or web spiders actually look for are your domains. They want to make sure that you have the correct domain and that you're one of the top level domains. They're probably not going to give you a top spot unless you're one of these. Now, there's a crap ton of domain names that you can use, but this course we focus on seven. The domain is the suffix of a domain name in a web address. The idea would be right here where it says .com is the suffix of that domain name. So right up here where it says .com, that would be what we call our domain. There's seven that fit into this category. One is .com, just like we talked about. Now, if I'm going too fast, please feel free to stop me. Uh, .com is one that just shows that it's a commercial site. You have .NET that's supposed to show that it's a networked website, and you're like, WSD.NET. Why is it .NET? Well, they probably used it because they're claiming that we're all on one network and that it all kind of works. Uh, and you're like, well, isn't it educational? 
and that's more network. And yeah, that, that kind of could be part of it. Sometimes you just find the right TLD or the right domain name that works uh, or is one of the top domain names or and you just go with it. Uh, because Weber State kind of had dibs on Weber.edu. So Weber School District couldn't have it. Other ones that you need to know, org stands for organization. Gov.gov stands for government. EDU stands for education. If you go to Weber.edu, it's Weber State. .int for international organizations. And last but not least, .mil. .mil stands for military. So if you see a .mil, the likelihood of it being anything but military is very, very rare. Um, .org, .net, .com are kind of interchangeable at times. And if you can afford the domain name and you just want it to be a top-level domain, a lot of people just go for it. Okay, one thing that we like to talk about, and this is something that web crawlers also look at, is your actual content. Now, the idea of content marketing is that you have a strategic marketing approach that focuses on creating and distributing content that's valuable, relevant, and consistent. You want to give people something good to look at. You want to have content. Now, content, we're going to talk about a bunch of different kinds of content. But the idea of content marketing is that we're trying to give them something that's actually worth something, it fits with what we're doing, and it's consistent. It's not all over the place. Um, different kinds of content, we already learned about SEO. Oh, having good content also helps with search engine optimization. My bad, oops, I screwed up on that one. But let's go on to this one. I think this is types of content. Yeah, different kinds of content, here we go. Different kinds of content can involve email, pop-ups, social media, videos, infographics, lists, podcasts, stories, how-to guides, ebooks, images, newsletters, blogs, user-generated or interactive, which would involve things like games, quizzes, polls, and other, other stuff. Um, the whole goal with this is to pretty much make it so that your customer or the people that you're trying to lead through this actual uh, funnel, the digital marketing funnel that we talked about earlier, are getting something that leads them there. It can be any of these kinds of content. Okay. I want you to draw a line in your notes and we're going to talk about three things that we like to call the digital marketing trifecta. One more time, I want you to say digital marketing trifecta in your notes. The first part of the digital marketing trifecta is what is known as paid media. Now this is where SEO gets kind of thrown out the door because paid media, the idea is that you actually have a promotional tactic based on traditional advertising where you just pay for media space. You don't even care about doing all the fancy stuff. You're just gonna buy your way to the top spot. These are what are known as sponsored spots uh, on a Google search. There's other things that are also known as paid media, which are things like display ads, which could be something like the one that's right here on the side with Mr. Beast for honey. It could be paid search sponsorships, where if I search for something, it's automatically at the top and I don't have to worry about my actual search engine optimization. It could be you paying influencers to do something and make you look good. It could be you paying for people to click on your stuff meaning that you won't pay any money until they actually click on your content. So the whole idea of Google putting it up there, they'll, they want you to get clicked on, so they're going to put it in places that you will. Social media ads, if you've ever been scrolling and you see something that says sponsored, someone paid for that. They're not doing stuff to actually just get it in front of you. They're trying to actually just make it happen. Now, that is a big, big part of the digital media trifecta. A lot of people use paid media. The next one's what's called owned media. Owned media is exactly kind of what it sounds like. It's tactics where you're actually creating your own content. You're the content creator and you're doing everything to actually maximize the brand's value to your customer. 
things like this might be your actual own social media that you're creating the content for. It could be making a blog or a website. Uh, examples, website, blog, social media presence, the three things that I just talked about. The whole goal of earned media or owned media is that you're actually just doing things to create content and make it so that people will want to be there. The third part is what we like to call earned media. Earned media is the idea that's based off of public relations where the public wants to talk about your products or services. Think about this, think about this as the digital version of word of mouth. This is where people are actually talking or giving a buzz about your content. Now, to think about this, this is where the term viral comes from. Things like viral come from when you get mentions, shares, reviews, you have a buzz about your stuff and people want to see it. And so they're going to try and turn it viral. Now, viral marketing is the whole idea that you want people to talk about your videos or your ads or different things like that. You're trying to make it so infectious that people want to hand it over to their friends. They want more people to see it. They're willing to share it. They're willing to view it. They're willing to send it in message. They don't care how someone else sees it, but they want to share it. It's the idea of the everyone's seen it content. Think about Baby Shark. Name one person in Utah that has not seen Baby Shark. It's viral. It is the second most viewed video on YouTube. It's made 324 million off of like YouTube alone. It's crazy. Now viral, viral content follows four main rules. Now, not everything that goes viral follows these rules, but I would say most of them do. And those rules are going to be four keys to going viral are that they're usually positive over negative. Most of them like, almost all of the top things that go viral aren't necessarily negative. Sometimes you'll see a negative post go, uh, and it's usually a news article or something like that, but the things that get the most views are usually positive. They evoke some sort of emotion, whether it's happy, sad, they make you feel a certain way. It doesn't matter what the emotion is, but they evoke it. Usefulness. Oftentimes when it's useful, people view it more. People are like, but Baby Shark wasn't useful. Dude, Baby Shark made it a lot easier as a parent for me to get like two minutes of silence uh, of my kid crying and him just be happy and listen to Baby Shark for a little bit. And all it took was me doing this with my fingers a little bit and listening to a song. Oftentimes, if not all the time, uh, viral content is visual. It gives you something to look at. Videos, pictures, those kinds of content are oftentimes more likely to go viral because it's easier for people to understand that way. Now you have an assignment where you're actually gonna look at a couple things that have gone viral. I want you to have some fun with it. See if they actually follow these four kinds of, or keys to going viral. If you have questions, please feel free to walk, or reach out. I hope everything's making sense. I'm having a good time, I hope you are. Stanger out, have fun.